Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. We have a very exciting WTA draw preview and prediction video to go through. It's the Abu Dhabi tournament, the WTA 500 tournament that's been added to the calendar for 2023. It's got some star-studded names. So we're going to go through and do my picks for each match and then of course ultimately give you guys my winner. Before we get into it though, remember to hit that like button. Do subscribe if you are new. Also do leave a rating review if you are listening on a podcast platform. Okay, let's get into this. So it's worth noting that on this bracket for picks, they haven't included the qualifiers. I'm going to note some of the more prominent qualifiers that have come through uh, that you might want to keep an eye out for. So Leila Fernandez is one. Of course, the 2021 US Open finalist. Uh, Putin Seva, uh, Lou from America, Yastrzemska, Fretch, Shelby Rogers, Marino, who's also another Canadian like Fernandez, has come through as well. So those are the more notable ones, I would say, in my opinion. However, there are going to be a second round of qualifying tomorrow before we get to uh, some of the round of 32 matches, which are on the same day, which I think is very, very strange. Um, but I would imagine that Fernandez and Rogers are probably going to get through that you would you would think you would think um so anyway let's get into the matches here so we've got kasakina who's the number one seed now before you say oh number one seed kasakina she's of course a top 10 player uh she's got a buy so of course she'll be coming through Taikman will play a qualifier by the looks of it i'll go for Taikman though uh zheng xinwen also qualify i have to go for the really exciting young chinese player daniel collins versus ostapenko so we've got a uh, you know, Australian Open 2022 finalist Daniel Collins versus a Grand Slam champion in Yelena Ostapenko. Ostapenko hits really big from the back of the court, as does Daniel Collins. They've got a little bit... There's a little bit of a similarity between the two in the sense that they both have underpowered serves as well. I would say underpowered second serves anyway. So there's going to be a lot of winners. There's going to be a lot of power from the back of the court. I think Daniel Collins might be a little bit too solid for Ostapenko, although in saying that, Ostapenko had a fantastic Australian Open and had a decent run. So I'm actually going to go for her, but that could go either way. There's, there could be a lot of winners and unforced errors, or just a lot of errors, or a lot of winners. Um, it could go one of three ways, honestly. Uh, Kudamato was going to buy. She's going to be dangerous, of course. And then we have Elise Mertens versus Trevor Sam. That's a fantastic match. Trevor San had some decent form at the start of the year at the United Cup, but at least Mertens is a pretty solid all-round player, and I, I feel more safe picking her, honestly, in this matchup. Krachikova, I mean, as I said, this is a star-studded lineup. She won the French Open, of course, in 2021. She was a former top-10 player. She was ranked number... I think it was ranked number two at one point. She has found some really good form, beating... Shviontek in the Australia final at the back end of last year. She's dangerous. Keep an eye out for her. Uh, had an underwhelming Australian Open, but I don't think her bad form in slams is going to continue for too much longer. I think she's going to have some deep runs this year. Uh, Bedosa versus Samsonova is a fantastic match. Bedosa's plummeted down the rankings, of course, after uh, a pretty poor end to 2022 where she had to defend a lot of points and also at the start of 2023, she's not looked um, particularly good and unfortunately had to pull out of the Australian Open due to injury. She is back and that's a, a solid sign. And actually, I say she didn't look good, but actually at the start of 2023, she looked okay. And going into the Australian Open, I think she was pretty confident about uh, making a deep run. So the injury didn't help, let's say. I'm going to go with Bedosa to beat Samson over. That's a tough match. Then we've got Haddad Meyer versus Buzkova. That's, again, a very, very tough one to call. I'm going to go with the lefty of Haddad Meyer, but she's been a little bit underwhelming at the start of this year after a career-best 2022. Buzkova is a tricky opponent first up, but I, I'm going to back the Brazilian to make it through. Andrescu has most likely a qualifier by the looks of it, but I'll back Andrescu to come through. Similarly to Hannah Mayer, she's had a little bit of an underwhelming start to this year. Uh, someone who started picking up the pace last year. Of course, a former Grand Slam champion. She's still very young. She needs to find a little bit of form and, and steam, I think, behind um, her 
to give ourselves some momentum, I think, in this just in this little swing here and also throughout this year, I think she very much is a confidence player. There are some aspects to her game where she needs to improve, but she's a lot more well-rounded than some of the other players who are ranked a lot higher than her. So uh, she should be finding her way up the rankings sooner rather than later, you'd imagine. Now, you also have what really, to me, is a intriguing matchup. Arguably the best first round of the tournament. Pliskova versus Muguruza. So Pliskova, we know, has been a top player. She's won a lot of tournaments. Hasn't ever won a Grand Slam. Made a final of Wimbledon in 2021. Made you know a lot of other um, deep runs in slams as well. Muguruza, of course, a multi-Grand Slam champion and has been in horrific form as of late. Uh, you know, plummeted, has plummeted down the ranking. She actually is only qualified for this tournament with a wild card. So, and she has been in horrific form, lost in the first round um, of a tournament last week, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to go with Pliskova. I just, I don't see Magruth turning it around anytime soon. Uh, I think this could, though, be a real turning point for her. If she were to win this, of course, that could really turn her year around and her form around very quickly because it's a very notable victory. I just don't see it happening at this stage. I think she will turn it around. It's just a question of when. Uh, and also you have to think about the motivation because she hasn't really gone deep at a slam for a couple of years now. Uh, and she's won a few grand slams. She's not super, she's not particularly old. I think she's late 20s, if I'm not mistaken. So she's still got some time if she wants to win more slams. For her, though, is there that motivation? I'm not quite sure. I wonder whether that's what's lacking rather than the... It's more the mental side rather than the physical attributes and, uh, and say, game plans tactically. That's my opinion on it anyway. Rabakina has a bye, of course. Fantastic Australian Open. Made the final. Wimbledon winner last year. She's now top 10 player as well. She's going to be really exciting to watch. Annette Contivate versus Zhang. Going to go Contivate. Uh, then we've got, of course, here two, uh, we two qualifiers. Uh, then we've got two wild cards in Kostyuk versus Kirsty. I think Kostyuk to come through that. She had some impressive performances at the Australian Open. She's a very, very exciting young player. She's been a little bit underwhelming in the last uh, year or so, but for me, she's someone that we should definitely keep an eye out for. I think she's going to be really good, um, in my opinion. She beat um, Anissa Mova in the first round of the Australian Open, which I thought was a great win. She did get completely destroyed, though, by Pagula, 6-love, six 6-2 six in the third round, which wasn't ideal. And then also got beaten by Andrescu uh, only last week, <laughs> only a few days ago even, um, against Andrescu, 6-love, six 7-6 seven six in the quarterfinals of the Thai Open or Wuhan Championships. And, yeah, I mean, she needs to find a bit of consistency in her game. That does seem to be quite a few peaks and troughs in her and she oscillates pretty frequently like her form oscillates a lot now Benjic has a buy which is great for her so she'll go through this is where it starts to get tasty Kasakina versus Taiko I'm going to go Kasakina uh, Zheng Shinwen versus Ostapenko I'm going to go Zheng Shinwen I'm really high on her uh, despite Ostapenko's good form I think I'm going to go for the Chinese player Kudamatova versus Elise Mertens I'm going to go Kudamatova Kuchikova and Bedosa is a fantastic... I mean, that is a pick em, isn't it? That's a really good matchup. I'm going to go Kuchikova based on more current form. I also think her style of game might frustrate Bedosa a little bit. Hadamea versus Andrescu. I'm going to go Andrescu. I think on hard courts, that's probably a slightly better matchup for her. But Hadamea is tricky being a lefty as well. I think Andrescu should come through, though. Pliskova, Rybakina. going to go Rybakina, given current form. Very hard to pick against her. And Pliskova, in my opinion, probably not good enough to stick up against her. Uh, Contivate will have uh, a qualifier go for Contivate. And then Benjic to beat Kostyuk, I think. And Kostyuk, as I said, has the ability to beat anyone, uh, but the inconsistency is there. So it's hard to pick her on a consistent basis. Uh, Kasakina. Zheng Shinwen, I'm going to go Zheng Shinwen. Or the Kasakini, the tricky opponent. Ah. Mm. 
Ngo Zheng Xinwen. Kochikiba to beat Kudamatova. Rebakana to beat Andrescu. Really good matches here. And wow. Uh, Benchic Kontav. You're going to go Benchic. I just think Kontav is a different animal when it comes to indoor tournaments. She's so good. On the outdoor stuff, I just, I'm not so sold on her, honestly. And she's just had some really adverse results in the last year, year and a half. So that leaves us with semi-finals of Zhang Xinwen and Krachikova. Gono Krachikova to beat Zhang Xinwen. And I've got Rebakina versus Benjic. Now, I think even though Rebakina's had some rest, I find it difficult to see her after making the final of the Australian Open after a long run, coming into this tournament and winning it. I think if she was fully match fit and had absolutely zero fatigue, uh, and not just physical but mental fatigue, then I could see her winning this. But I'm going to go with Benjic to be here in the semifinals because mainly due to those two factors. That's not to say that Benjic couldn't beat her um, if they were both, you know, kind of tip top, if, if you will. But in this scenario especially, I think Benjic should come out on top. So that leaves us with a very, very tasty final of Krachikova and Benjic. I'm pretty high on Krachikova really making a good resurgence this year. I know Benjic is very solid as well. I could see her winning it also. But I'm going to go for Krachikova. I'm, I think from what I've heard from tennis fans, she tends to divide opinion a little bit. Some people think she's a bit – her style of play is quite – good to watch and she's great for the women's game others find it um, not necessarily boring but a little bit one pace at times i really enjoy her game i think she's got a slightly different game i know she plays a lot of doubles as well and has won grand slams multiple grand slams and doubles uh, she is a good player i think for the women's side i i really do think she is i'm hoping that she is thrown into the mix when it comes to grand slams because it's a, and only a good thing if we have more. We've got Sviontek now. We've got, um, of course, Rebakina. We've got uh, Sabalenka. Those are three guys that have won slams recently, so they're in the mix now uh, for sure. And then you've got people just below that who have gone deep and they're looking to win their, their first one, like Jabur, like Pagula. You know, those two are off the top of my head. And then Coco Golf even. And then you've got some that have won one and they're kind of looking to push on, like Rochikova, who's won one, not last year, but the year before. Um, and and I, I'm hoping she can be added to the mix, mix because she's got a good all-round game. So could she give her to win the Abu Dhabi Open for me in uh, the inaugural tournament anyway on this part of the calendar, this WTA 500? Uh, so she's my pick. Let me know who you've picked. And uh, yeah, we will see you very, very soon. Very much looking forward to seeing all of you uh, hopefully on some live streams coming up and we've got some really exciting stats videos as well statistical analysis videos coming out uh, we just released the Vavrinka one so keep an eye on that we have some very exciting projects coming up uh, with some upgrades let's say to the videos to some of the videos that we're going to be doing so keep on out for those as well uh, thank you very much guys stay safe and well we'll see you in the next